everyone, and welcome to the very first episode of a brand new series called Void War. This is Remlace from 4 k Theories. Hello, this is Fiora, and I've only spent six months on this. Yes, long time in the making. Um, so basically, um, in case you are unaware of the formula, this will be another series in the same vein as the previous series of Aeronautica, Men at Arms, and Blitzkrieg. But this time, we're focusing on spacecraft. Uh, how many NASA engineers have I terrorized? One, two, three, seven. Seven. The answer is seven. Yeah, yes. Um, so, don't say we haven't actually done any research on this. <laughs> so, um, this first piece is actually not going to discuss any of the ships in question necessarily. I'm going to be discussing general terms that will be used throughout the rest of the series. That's because we're dealing with space and... The final frontier. The final frontier. And in some <laughs> cases we're dealing with objects that actually have the laws of relativity applied to them because they're traveling at fractions the speed of light. I.e. no mechanics. So, um, just some general... I'm gonna, we're going to start off with some general com comments on space combat theory. Uh, space combat is theorized to fall into three categories. There is spinal battle weapons, a uh, fighter style of uh, carrier combat, and broadside slugging matches. Examples of the first battle situation spinal weapons are things like Mass Effect or Robotech capital battles. Ships that never actually see each other and must rely entirely on their sensors while firing weapons the length of their ship, hoping to hit at precise points that are specks upon the map in the distance. Uh, example 2 is the fighter aircraft carrier style, in which small craft are the primary means of engagement. We have these in modern navies, firing missiles and launching fighter bombers at each other, hoping to achieve dominance, but neither side ever sees each other from their own carrier. Examples of this are Star Wars, Gundam, Wing Commander. The primary keys to victory are fighter dominance and use of small craft to strike weak points on capital ships to cause them to chain react and destroy themselves. Slugging matches between capital ships are often incredibly brutal and destructive for both sides if the capital ships actually get in range with their own weaponry. The last theory is broadsiding at close range. This is the idea that since weapons we know do not exactly reach very far in terms of space. For instance, um, if I were to fire a battleship, a 16 inch battleship gun from the earth, from the edge of the earth's atmosphere at the moon, the moon would physically be, have moved out of the way by the time the shell reached it. They're, these type of battles are incredibly slow from a distance and they have to maneuver and evade their opponent hope and most shots do result in misses. This means that they rely entirely upon getting point blank and delivering massive broadsides with relatively inaccurate weapons, hoping to get as many hits as possible. Examples of this are Battlefleet Gothic video games, uh, capital ship battles in Star Trek Serenity, Battle stars of the Battlestar Galactica, as opposed to the Cylons' use of fighter missile tactics, Babylon 5, and Stargate SG-1. Understand, I will try to clarify each ship into a situation or another per its design, either being in one of these three types of combat theory, or if they're completely outside of that combat theory and that tactical idea, I will note what type of tactics it uses in theory, and why those tactics would work or would be ineffective. I do believe uh, now Rimlays is going to introduce us to uh, macro weapons, and I'm going to explain them in science. Yes, so basically macro weapons are the ranks of large cannons that are mounted on these ships, and their role is to destroy other ships using huge broadsides of, and volume of fire. These can range from massive artillery shells to deadly and precise laser and plasma batteries, or even incredibly crude, you know, ramshackle technology of the orcs, or even organic weaponry used by the Tyranids. But basically, for all intents and purposes, they're extremely big guns. 
they are incredibly big guns, and I'm going to clarify just what that means. I need to discuss exactly what we are describing when we talk about a macro cannon and how they would work. This goes for virtually all the weapons we're going to discuss. I had to figure out the speed and destructive power of these things. A single macro cannon, and please remember, these come in batteries of 6 to 12, fires a 1 kiloton, or 1,000 metric ton, mass object. 1 million kilograms, for easy reference. Now, from the actual Battlefleet tabletop game, I know a torpedo travels at 10 void units. One void unit is 10,000 kilometers. This is per strategic turn. A strategic turn is 30 minutes. This is exactly stated in the rule book. Now, taking this calculation, I know that means that a torpedo travels 100,000 kilometers in 30 minutes, which comes to 100,000 divided by 30 divided by 60, 55.55 kilometers per second. While a macro cannon arrives at the target virtually instantaneously between 6 to 18 seconds from the time it is fired. Therefore, I know the speed of the torpedo, and I can estimate the speed of the macro cannon traveling the same distance in 18 seconds, which means that it is traveling at 5,555 kilometers per second. 2% of the speed of light. Which means a single gun, not the full battery, just one gun, is delivering a 1 million kilogram object at 5,555,555.56 meters per second. I'm using meters per second because we're because the calculation for kinetic energy upon impact for a weapon traveling at anywhere near this speed it uses meters per second and kilograms. The exact calculation is one half mass times velocity squared. When I take one million, multiply it by five million five hundred fifty five thousand five hundred and fifty five point five six, square it, and then divide it by half. It puts the exact impact in joules or newtons because they convert to each other at 15 quintillion 432 quadrillion 790 trillion or billion 190 120 ugh, okay i'm gonna do this number again because it's a really long number <laughs> 15 quadrillion one, 432 trillion 98 billion 790 million 123,456 joules of force. Yes, I know I just pronounced that number wrong, but understand this is an insane number. It means exactly one half of the force of the gravitational attraction between the earth and the moon these are arranged in batteries of six this is roughly 3.688 gigatons of force gigatons of tnt i said so they pack quite a punch yes they pack 73 times the largest nuclear warhead ever detonated if this were to hit the South Pole, and you were in Warsaw, Poland, you would suffer three third-degree burns. A full battery of these should crack a planet. In theory. So, this is a very, very, very rough estimate of the forces involved when this slams into a ship. I have no idea what these ships are made of to survive that kind of an impact. I have no clue, because there's no substance in the universe 
that should be able to absorb that kind of a hit for how big these things are. Much let's deliver one. Understand, this has resulted in some very weird and interesting calculations. And, um... Be prepared for this to get out there. To an extreme. Um, I'm not going to talk about void shields. Void shields are... I'm not going to talk about void shields at all. They're extremely inconsistent in what they stop. Sometimes they... Sh Shots are described as lucky or skillful from a single macro weapon shot that destroys a void shield instantaneously or penetrates through it and damages the ship behind the shield. Other times, void shields stop entire fleet weapon volleys from hurting the vessel underneath. Furthermore, I have no power settings for any of them, nor any way to accurately scale them with something delivering 15 quintillion newtons of force into it lastly i cannot really use a real world analog for their technology since we lack any sort of shield like this frankly without the possibility of analyzing them scientifically i can't factor them into the ship design all of that said that is our full methodology for looking at these various ships shall we get on with the uh with the fun part Yes, we shall.